Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to look at creating animations in Photoshop CS4 Extended. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple animation in Photoshop CS4 employing some of the animation and 3D effects that are in Photoshop CS4 Extended. Now I'm using a stock image here, this is from Stock Vault and I think the keywords are Photographer, Shoot and Airplane and if you look those up you'll find that this is the only image that actually matches all those criteria. I've taken the time to mask the photographer so we're not wasting time now so I'm just going to choose select and then load selection and just grab the selection I've already made around the photographer and click OK. And I've converted the background layer into a regular layer so all I need to do now is to just click here and I'm just going to mask the photographer out for now. You'll need to do that for the image yourself. And now I've got the Cambridge photo that I'm going to use and this has already been sized down to 600 by 400 in size. I'm going to do this at a small size because the rendering requirements of Photoshop are really quite processor heavy so if I work with a small image we won't have to wait so long to render the video and the animation. So I'm going to go and grab my photographer and just drag and drop him into this image. And it's going to come in way too big so let's just press Control T and Control 0 and that's where he is so to size him down to an appropriate size to use. And he's a bit on the thin side so let's just click here to make sure we scale him in proportion. And let's just press Enter and that will settle him in position. Zoom in a bit into the image and I can get rid of this photographer image for now. Now because of the light in this image, the light that's being cast on the photographer's leg is in actual fact the wrong way around. So I'm going to grab the photographer himself, put him on a new layer and then flip him. So I'm just going to add a new layer below him and let's just merge this layer down. What that'll do is blend the mask into the layer so now we've got the photographer on his own layer and entirely isolated in the image. Let's just control click on this layer to select him. I'm going to choose edit and then free transform and I'm just going to set him to minus 100 of his current width which just effectively flips him over. I'm going to place him about here in the image. I just need my confirm transform tool there. Now although technically we don't need a shadow here because the shadow would be really out here I'm going to just show you how you could create a shadow for him. I've got him selected still so I'm going to add a new layer and I'm just going to add it below the layer that he's on. Let's go and select black as our foreground color so I can just press alt backspace or option delete on the Mac to fill this layer with black. I'm just going to turn off my selection with control or command D. Now I want to select this particular layer but I want to free transform it so let's choose edit free transform. Now I'm working on the layer behind the photographer so I'm just going to pull this at an angle and then size it in to make a passable sort of shadow for him. As I said it's not really at the right angle but I'm just doing this so that you can see how you would add a shadow to an image. So let's just select that. I'm going to blur it so it's a little bit less detailed than it is right now. So let's choose Gaussian Blur. I just need a small Gaussian Blur there, about that much. And I'm just going to add a mask to that layer and drop in a gradient. So let's choose a gradient. Let's do our black to transparent gradient. Just click on the mask here and just drag it in. And that was obviously the wrong way around and not quite the mask that I wanted. Let's just get rid of that, mask it again. And that's a passable sort of shadow for him. So now that we've got our image in place, we've got our photographer and his shadow, we need a flash because as he presses his camera we're going to see the flash on the screen. So I'm going to choose a brand new layer and let's place it underneath the photographer because I want his body to mask out the flash. 
And now let's just choose a white to transparent gradient. So let's bring white in as our foreground color. And then I'm going to choose this white to transparent gradient. This time it's going to be a radial gradient. I'm on my new layer and I'm just going to drag the gradient in. So I want a reasonable sort of flash effect. And now I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to select one of the star brushes that ship with Photoshop. It's this one here. It's a star 70 pixel brush. It's not big enough, but I'm going to make it bigger by using my square bracket. And I'm also going to bring in a yellow color. So let's just select here and let's select a sort of yellow color for our flash. And I'm going to paint this star on a couple of times. I'm just going to bring up my brushes palette and let's go to brush tip shape and this time rotate it spacing it out so that we can see it. And I'm going to brush it on just a couple of times. So we're getting a really good sort of flash effect here. So there's my flash layer, there's my photographer, here's my image, and all I need is a background layer. So I'm going to add another layer, drag it down to the bottom, make sure that this time white is my foreground color, and just Alt Backspace or Option Delete on the Mac and fill it with white. So now we've got all the pieces together, we're ready to go ahead and to create our animation. To create the animation, we're going to use some of the 3D tools in Photoshop CS4. So I'm going to start by selecting the layer that has the image on it, because I'm actually going to move that layer. I'm going to choose 3D, new 3D postcard from layer, because this will allow me to then move this layer using the 3D tools in Photoshop. And the 3D tools are here. These are the tools that move the image, and these tools move the camera position. Because I've got this layer created as a 3D layer, we can now use the Move tools to actually move this layer. When I click on the Move tools, you'll see this widget appear. You can move the image using the widget, or you can just move it using these tools. You'll only see the widget if you've got OpenGL enabled on your computer. So now let's go and move this image, this background image, so that we can start creating our animation. I'm going to choose the 3D slide tool and move it across here. And then I'm going to choose the 3D rotate tool to rotate it round at an angle. And that's going to be the starting point for my animation. At the same time, I don't want the flash on because I'm going to fire the flash as the image moves across and my photographer is taking the photo. So I'm going to wind the opacity of this layer down to zero. Now let's go and get the animation tools. We're going to choose Window and then Animations. In fact, I've got the menu items hidden here. I just need this Animation panel. Now the Animation Timeline tool allows me to change aspects of this image over the timeline. And there are two particular aspects of the image that I'm interested in. And one of them is the opacity of this layer, and the other thing is the position of this layer. So we're interested in Layer 5 and Layer 1. So I'm going to open the Flyout menu for Layer 5, and I'm going to select its opacity, because that's one of the things that I need to change over time. On layer 1, I need to change its 3D object position. So I'm going to select 3D object position. So they're now in place. Let's move forward to another position on the timeline. Let's go forward to this 10 point. And now we're going to set the final position for this image. So again, with the 3D tools, I'm going to grab the image and move it. I'm going to use the 3D Slide tool to move it across here, and I'm going to use the Rotate tool to rotate it back. The 3D tools can take a little bit of working with until you can get them to perform exactly as you want them to. So don't be concerned if it takes you a little while and a little bit of practice to work with them. I've now got the image where I want it in its finishing position. So I'm just going to click here on the Current Time Indicator, and that will set the object position. So now if I wind back across my timeline, watch what happens to the image. The image is moving across the timeline. This is the Start position, and this is its End position. So, so far we've got the image moving. We just don't have the flash in place. 
Now one of the things I'm a little concerned about is as the image moves, I want the flash to be appearing on the image itself, not on the background. So I'm going to clip the flash to the image. So let's just go back into these layers in Photoshop. And I've got the flash layer here, and this is the image layer. If I press Control and Alt and then click between these two layers, what I'm doing is clipping the flash layer so it's only going to appear in the image where this actual image itself is. So the flash is only going to appear over the top of this image. It's not going to appear in this white area behind it. So now that we've done this, let's take care of the flash itself. And for this, we need to be working with layer 5. So I can close layer 1 because I've already got that settled. I need to be working with layer 5, and I'm concerned about the opacity of this layer. Let's move it forward to position 3. And this is where I'm going to have my photographer take his first photograph. So I'm going to select this flash layer, and I'm going to wind the opacity up to 100% because that's him taking the flash photo. And I'm just going to click here because that's setting a keyframe for that position. The problem is that the flash is winding from zero opacity to 100% opacity over these first frames. What I really want it to be is at zero opacity at this point, then move forward a frame or two and be at 100% opacity. So let's just wind this back down to zero opacity, and you can see that Photoshop's put a keyframe in there for us. Let's wind it forward. This is the flash on nearly 100%. Well, it is actually 100%. Let's go forward a frame or two. And now let's take it down to 0%. And you can see Photoshop again has put another keyframe in. So let's move forward to the 6 second mark. Again, at this point we want it to be 100% opaque so that we can see the flash. Photoshop has put the keyframe in for us. Let's go back a bit and set it to zero because we don't want it to wind up. We just want it to fire a flash. And let's go after this point. You can see the flash is now happening. Let's wind it back to zero percent. And the flash is off. So that's what's happening at this position in the timeline. And it's also happening here at this position in the timeline. We're seeing the flash. We can add flashes at other intervals on the timeline. I'm just going to add one at nine. Opacity 100%, wind back just a little bit, take the opacity back to zero so that there's nothing happening in this period here on the timeline. The flash is fired, and then let's take it back down to zero again. And that's really all that was used to create that video effect. Now that we've created our animation and we've tested it because we've been able to drag along the timeline and see that it actually works, Let's click the Play button. As you play it the first time, you'll find that the rendering process, depending on the size of your image, could be quite slow. So you would expect that to happen. Photoshop is rendering those frames as it moves along the timeline. When it gets to the end, it then runs through a second and subsequent time. And of course, this time, because the frames have all been rendered, the animation is very smooth. Now that we've seen the animation, the next question is, how do we actually do something with it? This is a Photoshop file. I'm just going to stop the animation for now. We would want to save our file so that we could come back in and make changes to it if we needed to later on. So I've just chosen File Save. And Photoshop is saving the file with all its layers and with this animation timeline, as well as the 3D layer. And now we're ready to render this as a video. So just let's close down these dialogues. And to render this as a video, all we'll do is choose File and then Export. I'm going to choose Render Video. The video name is going to be called Cambridge Movie, and it's going to be put in My Animations folder. It's a quick time movie. You can view the settings if you want to. We're running at 30 frames per second, and all of them are keyframes. We can wind down the quality to high, for example. We can choose the size, but since it's already set to 600 by 400, that's exactly what I want. So I'm just going to click OK. You can see here again, it's set at 600 by 400. 
So you really don't need to do much in this dialogue at all except just click Render. And Photoshop's going ahead now and rendering this out as an MOV file. Again, depending on your image size and exactly how long your animation is, it could take some time to export the video. Ours is extremely small, so it's exporting very, very fast. So now that we've done that, let's go and see the final animation. Here's my animations folder and here's my Cambridge movie. It's opening in QuickTime. And now let's just play it. And there's our movie file. So there's a brief introduction to creating animations and using some of the 3D tools in Photoshop CS4 Extended.